Bob Nagy here, AB5N, with another equipment review. This time I'm going to show you a couple of the latest releases from the Baofeng group of talkies, and there are many of them. Now, many of us are familiar with these talkies or have a few of them in our stable because they are very inexpensive. Why not get one? And if I, when I have misplaced one from time to time, I really don't worry about it. It usually shows up again on the garage floor or something. And, or if I'm going to run out on a bike trip around the neighborhood or hike or something, and I want to put an inexpensive thing on my belt that I don't care if I really lose, it's going to be a Baofeng. So we consider them sort of almost disposable. It's funny to think that a plastic cover for one of the big three manufacturers talkies from Japan costs more than one of these with a drop-in charger, headphone, uh, belt clip, all the accessories included. So that's why most of us have a few of these. But they're releasing a lot of versions of these now and it's these two I find the most interesting. That's why I wanted to show them to you. Um, if I'm in the shack and I need to generate or receive a signal on UHF or VHF, I will grab one of these every time and punch the frequency in, turn it on with the analog volume control and be ready to go in five seconds. They're sort of handy to have around the shack. Um, the newcomers to our hobby, and, and including the preppers, think that, well, you know, $27 for a handy talkie with a drop-in charger, earphone, bell clip, and all the accessories sounds about right to me. No, for those of us who have been around for three or four or five sunspot cycles, we know that we've been paying hundreds of dollars for handy talkies willingly for many, many decades. This is not a $25 to $50 handy talkie. This is more like a $200 handy talkie or more. So uh, there's something going on, and we'll talk about that. Um, I guess we'll just talk about it now. The reason, and it's twofold, that these things are so inexpensive is first that there's no love lost between Japan and China because of their history of invasions and all this stuff, Ch Japan into China. And China has so darn much money that they're able to control a lot of these markets and they wouldn't feel bad if the big three went out of business. So that's sort of the um, that side of the coin. What happens is you know that it doesn't cost $25 to design, manufacture, produce the packaging for this, send it over to the boat docks, ship it across the ocean, give it to a dealer here, give them some profit, and then ship it to your door with no shipping charge for $25? Uh, that's not realistic whatsoever. So, you know, th that's happening because China's government is subsidizing industries over there to capture markets. They get to the market first. We remember that um, back in the 80s, when the supercomputers started coming out, the PCs, Macintosh was introduced with a five inch black and white screen. And about three months later, Commodore came out with a 4096 color multitasking stereo audio, an amazing device, uh, the Commodore Amiga. But it got to market second and never captured the market. And of course, uh, Commodore went out of business subsequently. So China's trying to to flood these markets. You see this on the belts of construction guys, everybody that, you know, all the frequencies that, that this can, things can receive on, they can transmit on. They're not, you know, restricted to amateur use, which is, means they're not type accepted for many of the purposes that they're being put to use on. And the FCC may clamp down on this, and we may see that sort of go away with this. The other thing is that product development is not the same in China as it is in the West. Here we have, say, we're going to develop an electric car, whatever it is. There's three, four companies working on it. The first one to market usually captures the majority of that market share. The second company or third may get a piece of it. The rest of them are going to eat the development cost or go out of business. In China, especially Shenzhen, everybody shares everything. It's a crazy model that we're not used to. But if you go in there with a product idea, at the end of a week, you can have your prototype ready to go. Looks like this because you borrowed and everybody's exchanged and they're willing to, oh, yeah, I got that, got that, got that. And you're piecing it together, whether the t technology is stolen from somebody else or whatever. But they're sharing their technologies and jumping the products markets on a lot of this stuff so quickly because of that development model, which I guess is working for them at the moment. Um, so, of course, the bottom line is we're getting these pretty darn nice talkies for very, very low prices. I mean, you never guessed you could get this kind of stuff for this, this kind of price. Um, today, I want to show these two over here. It's uh, basically the UV5R, but it's the UV5R RX3. It's a upgraded UV5R in the same original case, but looks nicer, plus 220 megahertz. So, that's a nice plus. I've tested it with my Kenwood 220. Transmit receives great. Power output's good. Everything looks normal on it. Um, 
And the other one is the GT3TP. This is a UV5R over at Sane Sonic. Yeah, Sane Sonic Development uh, Company. It's like a design house, I guess, over there that took the guts and put it in a much nicer box with a bunch of improvements. I consider it to be the nicest of the originally UV5R type talkies. I think it's a little bit more, but it shares all the same accessories as far as earphones and things like that. The batteries are slightly different and the drop-in chargers are slightly different, but they run on the same wall wart. So both of these also have a extended life long battery pack for 10 to $13 that is last forever. I mean, I just keep this thing going all week or longer. What a great little battery pack. I did want to say on this GT3 TP, which is the third revision of the GT3, I like this radio. It has a larger, better speaker than the original Baofeng UV5R. It just sounds better. The case has a much better form factor in the hand. It just has a little rubbery size that really grip well. The original models had a black and white or reversible display. It, they're back to the color display. I like the, the black and white display. Same operating system as the UV5R. So if you know how to operate that from my original video, you know how to operate this. It has several upgraded ICs inside that make it perform better in a lot of little ways, and it does sound better. Uh, it's my belief that these are STRs in their guts, so it is possible to change these quite a bit, but they have really identified several of the problems. I think one of them is that the squelch was pretty darn loose on this thing, and I think they've tightened that up as well. They've also bumped this Model 3, the 3TP, to 8 watt output. That's low, medium, and high, 1, 4, and 8. Now, I don't know how I'd feel about putting 8 watts up to my eyeball like that. I'd probably go with the speaker mic, <laughs> hold it out a little bit. I always run these things on low power to save battery. Anyway, <clears throat> this comes with an improved ducky, dual band ducky. So like these really super thin on the top, and it does work a lot better. I was just comparing it on the Weather Channel and others. It does work better than the originals, and even the connector, they say, is improved. Same accessories, like I said, except for the battery packs. And both of them are programmable from the free Chirp program. Really great program for free. It's got a lot of preloads. You can load up the FRS channels and add those to your things if you want, to your bank. It's got the marine channels. You can pop those. And of course, it will transmit and receive on those frequencies. Uh, not type accepted, I imagine. So these do represent a unbeatable value in amateur radio, of course. and. Uh, I just don't think there's any resisting these things. Um, these are sourced from RadioOddity.com, an odd name, but it does stick in your head. One O in the middle, not Radio and O I D T Y. It's Radio Oddity. One O in the middle, two D's in the Oddity.com. They carry all this stuff, and they also carry a couple of interesting items: a 40 watt power amp for these HTs. They've got two versions: one for digital DMR style, probably D Star and C4 FM. I'd, I'd use with that amp that does made up with these or other talkies and a 100 and 150 wattish HF amplifier for use with QRP rigs that I reviewed earlier and that has been serving me really well with uh, most of my QRP radios. I have that on a uh, Italian uh, ELAD Duo right now, SDR. So there we go, these two new offerings from the Baofeng Group, I would say, China, and uh, check them out. You might have use for one of them. Until next time, take care.